Oh, so I took this um, trip across the country with a friend of mine going from San Francisco to Vegas all the way across I-40 um, uh, to Memphis um, and then up to Cleveland and then to New York. And um, we're both, my friend and I were both from the South originally, and we started speaking Southern almost like we hit the panhandle of Texas and we just, something in ourselves knew to start speaking that way. And um, we started doing it just naturally, even without talking to people. And um, <laughs> we just knew now's the time. And we, um, we had become addicted to Starbucks. Uh, it was hot, it was summer. And um, there's nothing like a caffeinated milkshake to really give you the extra jet fuel you need to get over the next state line. And um, so we started learning the entire Starbucks menu. And, you know, it's really, when you're in San Francisco, you don't need to go to Starbucks. And it's a very uncouth, uncool thing to talk about. But because um, uh, there's like places here that, you know, they... They hand grow, hand fertilize, hand pick, hand polish, hand roast, hand like every every coffee bean in San Francisco is treated, you know, like on a little velvet pillow and you know made to perfection with designs and the foam on the top. So you don't even talk about going to Starbucks because that would be like talking about going to McDonald's, you know, in the middle of a five star restaurant. It's just not. It's just not right. But when you're on the road and the other, the only other option is like McDonald's coffee, which is horrific. Um, it's, it's fantastic. Starbucks is like, it's like the most amazing thing you can see on a billboard when you're driving in the hot summer and, um, and you just, you know, you have to push through. And so we were about five hours from Memphis. So we're like, you know, we're in that, that awful spot where you're exhausted, but you're like, I'm going to push through because, you know, there's not enough time really to, um, there's not enough time to actually like, um, get a hotel, you know, cause you've, you've got like, but you do have many hours to go. And so we, we couldn't find a Starbucks. So we stopped at this weird store in Arkansas where it was like, you know, it wasn't really a restaurant. It was just takeout. And it was like ice cream and burgers and, and then they had a store with groceries, but they weren't like regular groceries. Like it was just like a little store with an identity crisis in the middle of, you know, off the highway in Arkansas. I didn't even know what it was called. It was some local yokel thing. And I, I thought, well, they have ice cream and coffee. So how hard is it to make a caffeinated coffee milkshake? And it seemed logical. It took us like an hour to freaking just get what we needed and get out of there. And it really was so disturbing to us. Like, you know, I go to the counter and I'm like, Hey, you know, I want like a coffee milkshake. And the kids like, like coffee or like well, ice cream. I'm like, no, no, just regular ice cream, but with coffee in it. Like instead of putting the milk to make it like, like slushy and smooth, like you just pour coffee in and he just like, and then blend it and then give it to me. And he's like, he just blinked at me. Like I just like, said the most bizarre thing. He's like, well, I'm going to have to talk to my manager about that. Cause, uh, cause I don't, we can't do that. I don't, I don't think we can do that. I'm like, well, good God, it's not illegal. Like what is wrong with you? And so sure. And I'm like, please, you know, like, Oh God, the manager, you know, you don't want to talk to the manager at a store like that with an identity crisis. Like who knows who's managing that store? Who's managing that store is someone who might be dumber than the first person we talked to. And it literally took forever, like, to explain this idea that, you know, Starbucks is making millions of dollars on across the country and the world of basically a coffee milkshake. Like, it's not, this is not that difficult, but it took us, like, and the manager's, like, trying to figure it out and, like, well, I'm going to have to charge you for the coffee and the milkshake. Like, I guess, like, defying us, like, well, maybe if I just make this too expensive you know, you'll go away. Like, let's make this an inhospitable act. Like, it was just like, God, you know, <laughs> if if they can't come up with, like, coffee milkshake, you know, in an ice cream store, like, like how hard, when's it going to be, like, gay marriage? Gay marriage is just never going to go through. You know, you can fuck your farm animals, but man and a man, that's just never going to work. Like, oh my God, it was so unbelievably frustrating because this is like eating into our awake time of driving into Memphis and, uh, um, we both, you know, we just had this sort of like, 
oh yeah, we're never coming back here again. Because it was just such a difficult thing. And it took like, it they were very slow, you know, in actually executing this thing because they really didn't want us to make them do something as unnatural as putting coffee and ice cream together and blending it. And you just, oh my God, I just don't even, whew, man, how do you get, how do you get to work? Do you drive? Do you operate a vehicle? Because good Lord, I don't want you operating a vehicle. I don't want you driving next to me on the road when you, you can't get, get coffee and ice cream in the same cup together. I just like, and it bothers you and you will try to stop it from happening because it's unnatural. Jesus Christ. So I can't believe I never got killed in the South. I almost, they tried, but I have gotten my ass kicked quite a bit, but good Lord. Whew. Man. So on a completely different note, um, I once dated this woman, uh, who, um, who broke up with me because I'm a feminist. Um, and you know, she was just a crazy bitch. Good God. Um, that was supposed to be, you know, hilarious. It's so hard without a laugh track. And so when I was, uh, visiting my parents, I, um, I saw a, uh, I saw a hole in the tile on the floor, like a weird looking hole. Like, it looked like a bullet hole. It looked like something at high velocity, something small at high velocity had hit it. And, uh, and I, I was like, Mom, what, what is that? You know, the rest of the tile floor was okay. I'm like, what, what, what is that? And she wouldn't tell me. You know, she's like looking away like a kid, like she can't hear me. No, what is that? And she says, it's a, it's a bullet hole. It's, a, it's the bullet ricocheted. And I'm like, the bullet? <laughs> of what? Gun? She said, oh, there's a gun. And, uh, and it went off. And I'm like, well, how did it go off? And she said, well, I had it in my hand. And, uh, and I sneezed. <laughs> I sneezed. And, you know, the gun went off. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, oh, my God. This is like, you know, I know Second Amendment. But, you know, <laughs> I... You know, if you feel a sneeze coming on, put the gun down. Because, uh, you know, my mom's had a history of, like, respiratory sinus infections and stuff. And sneezes a lot. And, you know, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, it's so... Oh, my goodness. That's such a scary thing. So one of the other things I wanted to cover is... Uh, there's this, like, sort of cultural phenomenon of people being overly positive. Like... You get judged on whether or not you have positive things to say. And this is this has been included in like suddenly being diagnosed and having this chronic illness is is people don't want to hear about it because it's not positive. It's just it's not positive. So therefore, if you're not being positive, people don't actually want you to speak. Even if you have something to say that's real and true, like that doesn't matter. It's either positive or negative, and if it's negative, we don't want to hear about it. So you know, Fukushima or the black rhino going extinct or, you know, the um, Hurricane Yolanda that hit uh, the Philippines. People just don't want to hear about it. They want to hear nice, happy, positive things. And I think it's a sign that things are really tanking, um, that we can't handle bad news anymore. Like, we can no longer handle bad news to the point that we actually cannot... Um, we actually we can't hear it. It's like it's like a frequency that our ears won't register, and it's really upsetting if you actually are having experiencing a negative thing, like you know, and people don't want to hear it because then there's no place for it to go. Like they just they want to be entertained and they want to be distracted, and they and then it all has to be positive. There's no no negativity, and I'm like, well, you know, some things are just freaking negative, like you know, babies dying of cancer. I, you can't spin that into a positive, you know, like, I, and it's really, it's really frustrating if you're actually going, you know, you lost your job or you're going through hard times because nobody wants to hear about it and there's no support for you, which is, you know, if we're not here to support each other, what the fuck are we doing? 